I'm Adrian Schröter. I'm the project manager of the Open Build Service. Um, the Open Build Service here is the technology. Uh, the, the, the technology which we use in SUSE and outside of SUSE for building our products. So who has had some contact with Build Service already? Okay. What did you do with the Build Service? Okay. Okay. You have your own build service? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. So very, very brief, very short overview. What is a build service? Build service is some kind of infrastructure where people put source code inside. The build service is calculating how it can build the source. Depending on the build result, it can build further packages usually, and after, after some time, when enough packages are built, it can build images, so any kind of shippable products. So very, very short overview about the build service. Inside of SUSE, we have a build service, and um, the internal build service builds all our products. So it is the center's or the cornerstone where every developer has to submit the sources, all the review processes happens there, the release managers um, manage how they, how they want to shape their products, which packages they want to put, put on the packages, which not. Um, there are different reviewer teams, for instance, legal team, the security team, which sits here, um, and so on. So, and it's, it's used in different phases. We use it for building the product itself, often an, an ISO image or, or an, an FTP tree. But also afterwards, after the product is shipped, it is used to build the maintenance updates. And then there's different groups which even make special updates um, for special needs a, a customer might have. But this is the internal setup of the build service. So this is very much SLE oriented. What I, want, I will talk about is more how to use it in the open or in your own environment, how you can connect your developers with your production team. That's my topic here. If you are interested very briefly only in, in running a build service and it's critical for you, you may even get commercial support, but you can also, build service itself is completely open source, so you can also run with the with community version, um, get community support, you have mailing list IRC and so on. Uh, build service is also developed in the public on GitHub, so it's a complete open source uh, product. The DevOps. DevOps, there are different definitions of DevOps. But usually what you find there is you have four phases. You have a development environment, the workstation of the developer often. Then you have some continuous integration system somewhere, some system where you gain trust in the changes the developer uh, is doing by automated testing. You have a test instance somewhere where you can see what's the visual result or you can more some more detailed testing and you have your production system. And DevOps describes how the process is from the, from the beginning to the end. If you have a disagreement at any point or a question, or I'm unclear, please uh, interrupt me. Ask questions, it's completely okay to interrupt me. So with build service, the so development environment is your workstations. What you do there is, is you develop, and when you develop code, you do this uh, usually not directly in build service, but you use Git or SVN or CVS, Mercurial, whatever. And the developer works on the code, and ideally it ri he writes also some tests. So with build service, the build service, um, so who has, who has not seen the build service at all yet? Everybody has seen it somewhere, somehow. Okay, good, so the build service has a web interface, 
but it has also a command line tool. So every, and we manage everything in projects and packages. And uh, the first command is just to check out an example here. It would check out the free cut package out of the science unstable project. And by the way, this is a, uh, the examples I'm using here are available in the public instance in build OpenSUSE.org. So everything I'm talking about is public accessible and you can check later on if, if how it's set up exactly and what happens and yeah, how to copy it. So it's a similar to SVN checkout command. You can check out, get the sources. And I show you that uh, on later on in the terminal. What you can do there is you can build it. You can do a local build, independent yeah, on, on your workstation uh, with the help of the build service server. That's good because you do not always want to work on the server or you might want to try out local changes before you commit them. So you edit your local changes, uh, add your local changes and try to build. You can even uh, build for something completely different what is not set up in the project. For instance, we have checked out the factory distribution here, the package from the factory distribution, but now I'm using the same source to build it for SLES 12 locally, just to see what happens, to understand if I need to fix something. Um, if I have test cases, and many software stack have some test suite coming with some test suite. Uh, what we recommend is, um, or what we also do with our packages, which we do ship, we execute the test cases uh, during the package build, if possible. There are some limitations, I come to that later. Uh, and RPM has actually uh, already a, a section for that. Um, has this person check section and you can run test cases there. Uh, the biggest problem here is that usually you don't have network access. Um, at least in our build service instances we do offer, you have no net network accesses for two reasons. For one, for security reasons, but also if, if you would add network access, it means also that you rely on an external source, so the build is not reproducible anymore. And our main goal, our most important uh, thing, what we want to achieve when we do something, at least with our instances, is that our builds need to stay reproducible. Because if we build a package today and in 10 years, uh, in a, with an LTSS update, it must be, we must be able to build it in the same way, but just adding this change, and we must guarantee this today that in 10 years we can rebuild this package. And if in 10 years the external server does not exist anymore, we would have a problem. Yeah. What I did so far was a local build of a single package on my workstation. But often a product uh, consists of many packages, of many pieces of source of, of code. And what we also want to achieve if we do DevOps, we want to have always the latest version of the development team. Often it's not only developed by a single person, it's developed by a team. And we want fully automate that uh, we get the latest source code, that we build it, and that we run the tests on it. So in this example, the OC command uh, adds a reference to an external Git repository. So I connect the external source uh, SCM system with the build service package. Um, and I'm going to show you that, how it does look like. Okay, so I'm, I've already checked it out here because it's really a large source code and what it actually does is it's creating the, only the first underscore service file. This service file describes how to get the source, how to store it, how to process it. And it runs before the RPM build happens. So before the free cut spec file gets, gets built. And the nice thing here is, um, 
with a local build. So I referenced an external git, and I actually have this external git repository here as well. So inside this freecut directory, there is a complete git clone of the version I do build here locally. And now as a developer, if I want to change something, I have the choice. I can go inside there, can change the git sources. I don't need to commit them. I can commit them, but I don't need to commit them. I, I just edit it, and I can build locally these changed uh, packages locally. And afterwards, if I want to, to submit it to the server, I have, I have two ways. I can either using the git tool uh, to create my patch, so I can create a, the diff of the changes I did, and I create the patch and I add it to the spec file, one way. The other way is I commit it to git, of course, or I make a pull request. So I connect both tools I use directly to, um, and uh, I don't need to, I don't need to switch my environment. So I can edit my Git tree and build it with uh, build service, and I can decide how to proceed with a with a change. Um, yeah, what you also see is the service um, when I, when I run the service, it creates these under other underscore service colon files. So it creates an archive. This is an OBS CPIO archive. Uh, and some meta info for later processing. Uh, we do not create a tarball here because a compressed tarball, or we could, as a variable, in the past we actually created a tarball here with some compression. Uh, the disadvantage of that approach is that, um, that we can't store the tarball incremental on the server. That means when I change one line of code, I store a new tarball on the server. Uh, but with the CPO archive, uh, we can store it now incremental. I have some slides later on what that means uh, exactly. So it helps a lot uh, on our production system also. Any questions so far? OK. Yeah? yeah. Well, sorry, you're not storing CPIO on the OBS server? Yes. We, uh, actually, the entire o CPIO gets uploaded and, and stored, but then there's a background process which is uh, checking where is it different to the former uh, CPIO archive, and it's only storing the deltas. I have some more information on that later. Yeah. Um, no? Ah, so. Uh, Okay, testing. So this is just an example, again, a simplified real-life example uh, of, of the FreeCut package. Um, FreeCut needs some other packages, and uh, I always want to, uh, to test it entirely. So if I change OCE, it has an influence on FreeCut. So I have a project there. Uh, called Science Unstable. You can find this in the public build service instance. And there are these three, actually some more packages inside. All are built there. The build service is, uh, builds uh, the OCE. It even checks if the build result of the new OCE is the same as, as the former build. If it's the same, it just drops the new build. If it's different, then it triggers depending packages like uh, FreeCut. And I built these three packages at the same point of time, at least for two build targets here, OpenSUSE and SLE. Um, but build service is not bound to SUSE, by the way. So you can also add uh, Fedora, Debian, Ubuntu, Arch Linux, and some more. And, yeah. and what you can also do is uh, run functional tests here as part of the image build, uh, of the package build, or even of the image build. So, yeah. Okay, I was a bit too fast. So what, what the build service really guarantees you is that the build is consistent. That's, that's the main, main feature of the build service, and that's also actually the main selling point why may, many other 
companies decided to use the build, uh, build service as their build system and the Tizen project, Linux Foundation, Intel, and many, many more companies. Um, another way what I can do is I can create test branches. So sometimes it's not enough to do a local build, but I want to, to show my build results to others to test more before, so I can create a branch. So it's a simple OSC branch command, and I can, again, I can do the same in, in my own private development area there. Yeah. So that's, that's only needed when I want to have the, when I want to have, uh, and the local build is not enough for me, and I want to publish it and collaborate with other teams, with other people. Uh, what I can also do is sometimes I don't know what I'm actually changing. So I change a package, but actually I don't know exactly what what it does influence which other packages. So uh, when you generate dependencies, when you change something like a compiler or, or a base library. So what you can do then is uh, you can set up an entire project and say, okay, this project contains all sources from the other one, but then I layer one or more packages on it and the, bu uh, the build service is building them. And then afterwards it, it calculates, okay, which other packages uh, may now build differently. And it's only building these packages then. And I can find out what, what do, do I influence and can test the build result again. What's, again, an example for that in reality? That's uh, what the OpenSUSE developers, uh, the people who develop the OpenSUSE distribution itself are doing. It's uh, below the OpenSUSE factory staging, and there are sub-projects, and they're using this really ex extensive. You see, you have many, many uh, sub-projects here, and they document which packages they put inside. Um, so this is manual work currently to decide which which packages they want to put together, test together, um, but the build service then is, is building the entire distribution and even uh, an installation images, which afterwards can be tested. So it's really, uh, that's, that's the main feature behind the switch from what we call factory to tumbleweed. Tumbleweed is the same source as factory, but tumbleweed is tested. Okay. Okay, yeah. So most likely you heard also of Jenkins, I think so. And do you know what Travis CI is? Travis CI is an online service, a free service usually, which works very well together with GitHub. And uh, it offers you to, um, yeah, it can be easily hooked into your pull request and, and, uh, and uh, git commits that you, whatever you work on GitHub, you get a testing from Travis CI. And if we compare it, build service with Jenkins and Travis CI, all of them have their pros and cons. The biggest disadvantage of build service is that you need to package your test cases. You need to package your source and you need to package your test cases. Um, if you do it anyway because you want to ship it, it's not a, <coughs> a big problem. Uh, if you only want to deploy it on your one server, it's maybe too much overhead. Um, with Jenkins, so Jenkins also can be triggered automatically to build something. It, you can also manually define uh, that after a specific build, some other builds should happen afterwards, but you need to conf configure it manually. It's not automatically calculated. Uh, Jenkins is also something what you need to install in-house. 
That's the nice thing about Travis. Travis is just online available, at least for open source projects. If it's closed source, you can still give them money and have your closed area. Um, the big pro on build service is that once you have done the initial setup, it's, it's usually easier because all the distrib distribution targets, the uh, latest Slash, the uh, Fedora, the Debian, and so on, is available on our build service instance. And even if you build a newer instance, you get it automatically. Just by linking these instances, you get it automatically. On Jenkins, you need manually set up a new worker. And depending on how good you are able to set up the worker, even the worker might get corrupted. So we had the problem that sometimes builds corrupted the Jenkins worker and then all following build results were void. And you need to add again for each distro a new worker. While in build service, since a build service build is anyway created from scratch, you all, all what you need to do is, is configure your build targets with, with an XML line. So it's a few XML lines and you're done. Or cl a click even in the web interface. And Travis is limited to Ubuntu only. And the biggest problem is that they switch from time to time the base distro and you have no control over it. So at some time, suddenly your test cases fail because they have switched to the newer distro and you're the, uh, really um, yeah, surprised that, that now suddenly uh, all your pull requests are failing. Yeah, so the reproducibility is, is a clear point for build service because build service is really isolating each build. Everything is, is reproducible from, from scratch. And we scale very good, I would say. So we have more than 600 Intel-based build instances in, in our instance. And I know some companies have even larger build service instances running, so we, we do scale very well. Jenkins can scale, has some own problems there. Uh, Travis is, uh, sometimes they scale very well because they use only containers. So also a difference with build service, you can even exchange the kernel. If you do something, if you write something which is depends on your kernel version, you can even test this with build service. In containers, you can't. On the other hand, the big pro of Travis is uh, still it's, um, it's very well integrated in GitHub. So if you work in GitHub anyway, it's very well integrated and uh, all your pull requests you see before you merge stuff, at least um, if, if your test cases are still um, running. So that's for, for the build service development, we, we actually uh, we used Jenkins in the past, but especially due to the additional manual work, what we need, we, we dropped it. But we still use Travis. We use Travis because all pull requests get verified. It's the fastest way the, the, the submitter gets feedback, and that's good. We can't run all test cases there on Travis, so we disable some on Travis. And it's, it's running on Ubuntu, so it does not mean that it works the same way on SUSE. So we test again inside of the build service afterwards, but it's, it's still the value because it's so fast and very well integrated in GitHub. Okay. Yeah. might be very well. I mean, what I would do in this case is I would write a test suite which I can run in Jenkins and in during building 
the packages. So I get a quick feedback from Jenkins, but I get the validation later on that it still works with, on this code uh, level with this maintenance updates and so on. That's what. The way I, I mean, because they're already far ahead of that. Hmm? And, and we're, I'm still trying to, like, get hmm. everyone to start adopting what yeah. yeah, but you. Mm -hmm. The way I envision it is as they start using it, you're right, like they're built with auto trick. Like you can add automation, an automation layer on top of it so that you don't even have to do yeah. You will just build packages. You would packages. just build the packages. You can also integrate Jenkins in, in some hooks so that you build again the packages, say that you test the pack, build packages in Jenkins. Also possible. It's also something what some people do. Um, No, no, but yeah. I, what I would try to do first is uh, to try to be become able to run the test suite also uh, during the package build. In addition, okay. then and maybe at some later point of time you will see what's more important for you right. and how much time difference is there if you you get the results from build service or from from Jenkins. It's it's. Uh, yeah, as I said, um, I mean, we, we used all, we are, in the past, for OBS development itself, we used all three. Uh, we got rid of Jenkins now because of the yeah, manual work, because it's easier for us. So Travis gets maintained by someone else for us, and uh, the build service testing is something what we need anyway, so, yeah. Okay, then we have a test instance usually. Um, so for everything where you can't, or where the, yeah, where, where, what you can't, either can't out test, uh, test automatically, or what, um, yeah, where, where you depend on external resources. Um, so you have a test instance. Uh, or, or some kind of load tests. I mean, you could also benchmark uh, inside of build service because you can say, okay, this particular thing builds only on this worker and nothing else builds on this worker at that time. So I can actually use the, the build times as a measurement if I have a drop down in, in my performance analysis. But it's, yeah, it's an indicator. But uh, often you run this on the test instance. Um, what you can do is, the simplest thing is you run, for example, super up and update the packages and, and run it there, easy. Um, you can even trigger this by, by scripts. You can hook in, uh, in, in the publisher. So the publisher is a part of the build service which is creating the RPM repositories or is, is uploading binaries to stage servers via AirSync and so on, and you can hook, hook any scripts, any executables inside. So you could uh, use that. Um, you could even build packages on top on uh, the images on top of your packages and deploy them automatically, for example, with Pixie. Um, that, yeah, that's that's something what we do with our workers. So our build service workers are again images built in build service and distributed with Pixie. And in the future, and future means next year, I think, uh, we will also distribute to cloud services so that the image automatically becomes available in a, in a cloud infrastructure. I mean, you can build this again yourself with the scripts and hooks, but we will have some better integration for that uh, next year, I hope. Okay, so that's all the four steps. And I want to show you the, um, example in build service for that. No. So this is our project where build service builds in build service. 
And what we, we are doing here is, uh, so we build the packages, we build the images, and what we have is our test instance. And the test instance, uh, I don't need to wait for that, maybe. So, so again, uh, the sources here in this project gets automatically updated from GitHub. So all, as a developer, all what I need is to click in GitHub on the pull request merge or push manually. Uh, and this, the sources change, the packages building, and even the appliances building, if they build. <laughs> and and this is some uh, the same code which we deploy at some point of time on build open org. But to see, uh, to test before, we have also our test instance. So, in the mm -hmm. and the test instance has again, uh, it has a link to the public instance, so it sees all sources, all binaries from build open org. And we have, and currently we have actually two own packages here. I don't know why exactly. Most likely because we tested something. And what it does say is that it links to the OpenSUSE.org instance and there the project OBS server unstable. So we, it's again, it's a one-time setup. Um, it rebuilds everything what we have on the other instance and we use a publish hook to, uh, as a publish hook to, to deploy this server. So again, if I, I click, just click on GitHub on the merge, it updates the sources in build open to the org. This instance gets notified by uh, build open to the org again. It builds it here and afterwards it deploys itself. And yeah, every three months we need to fix it manually because now it, bro it, it broke itself, but it's a test instance. So it's, it's a reason why we have it. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay, what we also have is a release mechanism. Um, this is something what can be used when you have an external decision if something is good or not. It can be a, just that a humans say it's, it's okay now, that the QA team says it's, it's tested, that the review happened and so on. And uh, so it's an abstract example here, um, what, what happens is it's just a command to the build service and it copies the sources and binaries from one project to another one. And is publishing also, of course, afterwards the, the target project. So that's a, that's a possible way where you can um, yeah, manage your release process and make it transparent. Uh, the maintenance people, for example, are using it. So they um, have a release request, and then there are different roles defined uh, who, of people and groups who need to accept this this release request. Okay, so that is so far the part of how a DevOps development could be implemented with build service and. I just want to mention now some features what we edit in our latest release to, to due to feedback and to make it e even easier. So we have collected the examples of the Linux kernel tarball. So in our build service, I think it was the internal one, it got installed August 2006. And since, and, and, and we collected in total 2,500 kernel source releases means tarballs. Uh, the average tarball size is 84 megabyte. Um, the, I think they are way larger than 100 megabyte now. 
and they were about uh, 40 megabyte back then. And in total, we, we use 200 gigabytes of disk space only for Linux tarballs, Linux kernel tarballs. And yeah, because of this and because of external people asking for a new mechanism not to let their uh, yeah, source server explode because they store every tarball for each git commit of their product. Um, we implemented some data storage. Uh, okay, some, some groups are even removing sources, but this is something what is no option for us because every binary we, want, we, we ever have built, we ever handed out, we want to be able to, to get the sources back. So in, in each app, there's a, there's a marker inside and we are able to restore the sources for that. So we, we just don't want to remove sources. But we want to store it more efficient and the OBS 2.7 has a known data mechanism um, and this is the CPIO archive in the end. The CPIO archive is uploaded and which gets uh, then compared with the past CPIO archive and we reached a compression ratio down to 3.7%. So from 100% down to 3.7%. So that uh, instead of the more than 200 gigabytes, we only need 7 gigabytes of this space now. Yeah, and this is a diagram over time. So we, we re-imported all the tarballs and you may notice something. <laughs> this thing, we were very shocked to see it and we thought, oh, it's our delta algorithm broken maybe. But then we found out that there were tarball releases where inside of the Linux tarball also all the Git objects were copied inside. And of course, this is additional data. So back in 2013, uh, only because a few releases had two, I think two releases, so had the con complete content of the Git objects inside, uh, we uh, it's, it's more than double of the space need of that. So if, if this wouldn't have happened, we wouldn't even better. It's, it's really, so actually we should be less than the 3%, so we should be down. <laughs> but yeah, sim simple mistake and yeah, then we need to store it again. But we don't want to mess with the tarballs. It's original source. Another feature is the download on demand repository. This is useful when you want to use external FTP trees to build against. So if you have your, some other group in your company or uh, some distribution which is not using build service uh, is offering the distribution only on, on the FTP server, what you can do is you can define, you can point to this F, uh, repository and make it available as a build service repository. So it's just a few lines of XML. I can show you that also if wanted. And the nice thing is that the build service then is polling this repository. It's only downloading the metadata in first place. And it can then already calculate the build, the build dependencies. And when a build really actually happens, it is then downloading only the needed um, binary packages. Um, that way we can uh, support now building against maintenance updates from Fedora or Debian, unstable and so on. And of course, uh, downloaded binaries gets cached, um, but only the needed ones are downloaded. Any question to these? Okay. And I would just show you some more build scenarios. Or do you have any unanswered question right now? Something what you had hoped to be answered and is, isn't answered yet. Okay. So usually we have a project and we to put multiple packages inside and we build them for multiple targets. So that's the easy setup which many people do and uh, all the development product, projects in public instance are doing. 
What I also can do in reality is I, I have a modification which I want to maintain for a longer time because I know that that is not going upstream and it's it's maybe for example it's patching the logos of my company inside and of course there's no way to to get it upstream but I can use the build service to to build a modif yeah, the modified version of this package so if you are a Slash user and you need a modified package which Zuse then won't support of course but if you're aware of that and you need any way your own version, you can use this mechanism. And again, the nice thing is that it's, if, if it's set up this way, you get all builds automatically. So as long as your patch is applying, you get always the latest version and uh, can uh, test it also. This is the example what, what we had with the uh, OpenSUSE factory. You can exchange packages and uh, and this works even across build service instances because if you're linked to a remote build service the build service behaves like the entire content of that remote build service instance is part of your own one and it's downloading then on request so I can fix my KDE for Less 12 SP0 because I had a broken SQLite, so I was able to exchange SQLite and then I was able to build my KDE. So oh, it's just some examples I wanted to mention uh, in the hope that you can make use of it. If you have further questions, we have the Open Build Service Org site. This is a project site. So you can find some documentation there and uh, the sources and appliances to install your own build service. And uh, also a link to the build OpenSUSE org, where you, yeah, which is just free resources. I hope all your questions are answered. No more questions. Ah, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, to, to support your local build service instance or the yeah. content or okay, the build OBS itself. OBS itself, yes. Um, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. yeah. And so it's like to us, it's one, we don't want to go to like two different companies. Yeah, but our consulting should be able to make also a contract for you for, uh, for support and maintenance. So you should be able get, to get a contract from them uh, where you get support tickets, where you can ask questions. And from the, yeah, I've, they will hand. They, they will hand it over to us in the end, uh, most likely, but, uh, but uh, we, uh, so we, meanwhile, we, we try to productize build service, but it's, it is often used very special in the companies, so you can't, it's not like a slash which you just install, so it, you must know the local uh, setup, and therefore we only uh, sell it via consulting, but consulting should be able to give you a contract or support uh, offer for that. If not, I can give you my card. I can, um, I can um, help you if, if you fail there. But we have, we have some customers in, in Europe, at least, um, who have contracts with consulting. And we back it. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I didn't get you entirely. It's, so you you built yes. You have a vendor. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, I mean, when you can make your build service instance uh, accessible by them, to them, then you can work actually together with them. So it, uh, that is something what works good with us when we work with some partner. Uh, they are keen to get there because you, we work together on the same package. We speak about the same problems. We can see the same problems, and we. Is there a Yeah, I mean, I, you can see how many we have in our public instance. Uh, uh, it's on the borderline there. It's, yeah. Yeah, but. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what you can do is you can either use, you can set the build service to the non anonymous mode. So only people with an account can log in and see the content. It's one option. Or if, if it's not even that not secure enough, you can still set up some VPN. But I think uh, if you use a non anonymous mode, it's, it's good enough. Uh, you can, you can, uh, build, you can. There's a configure option that all projects are by default hidden, um, and you need to add then the people to as maintainer or as some role to this project. Um, it's, it's the, I have to admit that this implementation is a bit. It, we, we added this, well, actually, uh, we integrated this with on which was wanted by a partner uh, uh, later in the code. So um, it's a bit clumsy. So you, for example, you can't hide a project afterwards anymore uh, because all this functionality in build service of that you can link packages and so on uh, can bypass it then. So you can only hide it um, when you create the, the project. Okay. Technically, as admin, you can do it even afterwards, but it won't be secure. That's the reason why we... So it, it, it is a bit clumsy, I have to admit. Uh, yeah, it's exactly. It's, yeah, it's, it, it, yeah it, it was not in our mind when we started this build service, so... Mm. Yeah. That's why I'm asking these questions because they are saying I don't want these people to see my code. I don't yeah. Well, the other thing I was thinking is like on our sort of Windows side, um, they actually have a packaging team. So uh, I was just like organizationally, I was asking for oh, why don't we have all these vendors bundled into an RPM packaging? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, at least you'll know that you have the same team building everything in a consistent way. They just mm. need to funnel the apps to them. And then Actually, inside of one company, usually the higher management sees an advantage of build service because they get sure that their developers submit their source really, and it's not only on this single workstation. Right. So that's, right. that's, that's a when you speak with inside of a company with some higher management, this is a strong point because it's happened often enough that uh, no guy left and the workstation, no one knows where it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you have further questions, I would say uh, we have a build service booth out there and I'm at the arm booth on the other side usually. Okay, thank you.